As a technician, one of the most aggravating problems to diagnose is noise complaints. A noise complaint work order can be a real headache, and it often turns into a frustrating game between the customer, the service writer, the technician, trying to pin down what that concern is, and then how to replicate it. And noises within the driveline are some of the highest offenders. With so many rotating components, like drive shafts, differentials, axles, and the wheel end itself, pinpointing the source of that noise can be a real challenge. But if you know what you're listening for, it doesn't have to be as much of a battle. And that's the topic of today's Around the Wheel. When it comes to the driveline on modern vehicles, configurations obviously vary widely. A front wheel drive Camry has different componentry than a second gen Ram. And because of that, we can go down a rabbit hole that would make a video like this about six hours long. So for this, we're gonna keep it simple. But these tidbits of information that you can use when test driving a vehicle for what you believe is a driveline noise complaint will hold true regardless if that vehicle is a front wheel drive car, an all wheel drive CUV, or maybe a four wheel drive pickup. Once you are armed with as much information on the complaint as you can get from the customer and are on your test drive, start with the basics. And that's the wheel end. Wheel bearing and axle bearing noise is probably one of the more common noise complaints a technician gets. Whether a serviceable tapered roller bearing, a sealed hub assembly, or even a rear hub or a semi-floating rear axle bearing and seal, these items see a lot of load and use in some very unforgiving environments. Water and dirt intrusion and contamination and even faulty service practices can quickly lead to an untimely demise of these bearings and bearing surfaces. So when test driving a vehicle with noise complaints that could be attributed to a faulty, faulty wheel bearing, Generally loading and unloading the suspension during the test drive and listening for noise pitch change will quickly lead the technician to pinpoint the offending corner of the vehicle. Loss of bearing preload and lubrication degradation due to water and contaminant intrusion are some leading factors in wheel and axle bearing failure. Let's now move on to the differential. Whether buried in a transaxle or part of a traditional rear wheel drive or four wheel drive setup. The differential's main job outside of gear reduction and power transfer is to allow the drive wheels to rotate at different speeds while transmitting that power. This is crucial for cornering. And by letting the wheel on the outside of the turn spin faster than the one on the inside, it ensures smooth navigation around corners. To achieve this, inside the basic standard open differential carrier, you'll find some basic componentry. Side gears, well, they're splined to the axle shaft. Then you have spider gears, as well as the pin, all helping to redirect power from the drive shaft to the axles. But differentials and their bearings wear out over time. And when they do, they make noise. And that's where our troubleshooting begins. Remember, diagnosing anything starts with replicating the problem. And for a noise complaint, it means taking that test drive armed with as much information as possible. That means success starts with that customer interview. And listen carefully. When does this noise happen? During acceleration? deceleration, only when turning. Armed with the correct information and then listening for the timing of events during the test drive will set you up for success once you're able to return to your bay. By carefully listening for the complaint on the test drive, the technician can really gain an understanding of what the root cause may be. As we mentioned earlier, a noise that changes in pitch as the vehicles rock side to side is typically a pretty clear indicator of failing wheel and axle bearings. The noise will generally gain in intensity as the offending corner is loaded. Now carrier bearings. Carrier bearing noise can be a bit trickier to pin down. 
As the carrier assembly is loaded by the transfer of torque to the ring gear, if the noise is stemming from failing carrier bearings, this is when it will generally present itself. Because of this, listen for that noise to increase in pitch and intensity that does not change much from side to side loading as the vehicle accelerates above 20 miles an hour. Inversely, a noise that presents itself primarily on deceleration is often an indication of worn pinion bearings, damaged pinion races, or pinion bearing preload that has been lost. As the weight of the vehicle drives through the ring and pinion gear set, that shift in loading will often change with tone and intensity because of worn inner and outer pinion bearings. Damaged ring and pinion gear sets, as well as chipped internals, are another common source of driveline noise. While gear tooth damage, regardless of location, will require more intensive examination to determine the exact source and cause, a few simple steps on a test drive can help give that technician a better indication of where the problem could be. Clunking that is rhythmic in nature and happens moving forward and reverse and is consistent even when turning is a fairly good indication of sheared or broken teeth on the ring and pinion gear themselves. Now on the other hand, clunking, grinding, or a vibration that presents itself when slowly navigating turns in a parking lot can be a good indicator of damaged internal components. Since remember, it's the side gears and spider gears that help give us our differential action. And while on the subject of internal kits, keep in mind that many limited slip designs utilize springs and clutches to help transfer power from the wheel that is lost grip to the opposite one. When servicing these units, it's important to not only use the correct friction modifier in the service, but also the correct gear oil itself. Incorrect oil usage, just like incorrect additive, can create an overly aggressive limited slip differential that can bind and pop during tight turns. It's incredibly important to reference OE service procedures when servicing these units. And if you happen to pull a cover and see a carrier that looks like it might be aftermarket, have a conversation with the customer and see if there was recent work completed. Often, aftermarket carrier manufacturers will recommend oil and modifiers that may be different from what the vehicle used from the factory. And finally, I need to mention ring and pinion gear setup and contact pattern. A ring and pinion gear itself can be the source of noise and complaint for several reasons outside of the chipped and broken teeth we spoke of earlier. The first is if, well, she's just playing wore out. Use over time will cause play between the ring and pinion gear or backlash to open up as the gear set wears through its induction hardening, which will lead to howling and noise. Also, a gear set that has been recently set up, but maybe set up a little too tightly, can create binding and wear as that gear set heats up. Adversely, one that was set up too loosely will also be loud. This isn't a video on differential setup, but following the gear setup manufacturer's recommendation on not only backlash, but pinion gear depth and bearing preload will help ensure years of quiet operation. Lastly, we spent time touching on wheel bearing noise, diving a little deeper into differential noise, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention U-joint and CV joint noise. As a vehicle suspension articulates and ride height changes, the transfer of power needs to happen at different angles. And depending on application, both universal joints and constant velocity joints, or CV joints, allow this to happen. But just like anything else, these items wear and become damaged. Noise and vibrations stemming from axle joints themselves should not be overlooked. Far too often though, they are. Don't get trapped into overcomplicating over the diagnosis. It's human nature to often jump to the more complex diagnosis when the real issue is much simpler. And do your customer a favor. When performing maintenance on your customer's vehicles, keep on the lookout for serviceable U-joints and make sure they are lubricated if you find some. These are all too often forgot about, often with premature failure being the result. The topic of driveline noise can be an extensive one. The multitude of vehicle configurations 
Well, they're extensive, and every layout presents its own little challenge. We focused heavily on the differential side and differential noise. And if differential service and repair is a subject that interests you, I encourage you to dig deeper into the plethora of resources that are out there on the subject. Many gear manufacturers have published extensive material. And if it's an area that interests you, it is certainly an area of opportunity for technicians and shops to specialize in, to bolster their offerings and build their own little niche in the market. Please leave any comments and questions below and I will do what I can to address them. I'm Eric Screeden with Endeavor Business Media. And as always, thank you for watching.